You there, Upworlder! Anyone using this elevator has to pay the toll. Yeah, this is our elevator. If you use it, you gotta give us something. I don't believe this planet. Even the beggars are trying to shake us down. Five credits! That's what it costs to use our elevator. Five credits! We are the outcasts. Banished and reviled by those who dwell above. Here in the filth and darkness, we claw out a wretched existence, scavenging and begging just to survive long enough to see another wretched day. This is our village. We live here in the Undercity. You have to pay us five credits for using our elevator. <laughs> credits, my brother! We have credits. Now we can buy food and medicine. Hush, or the others will hear us. They'll want our credits. We have to hide them. Go on, you two. Get out of here. <sighs> I'm sorry about that. Those two beggars give everyone in the village a bad name. We aren't all like that, you know. Most of us are good people. I'm sure you are, miss. It's just too bad your little welcoming committee is here to give people a bad first impression. My name is Shalina. You're from the Upworld, aren't you? I've... I've never seen it. I was born here in the Undercity. Is it as nice as they say up there? I've never been to the surface, but sometimes I think I can see it in my dreams. The sun, the sky, the stars, it all sounds so, so, so wonderful. Gendar, the leader of our village, tells me I should spend more time trying to improve things down here and less time dreaming about something I can never have. Maybe he's right. You probably think I'm a fool, having dreams of a place I've never even seen. But when I was little, Rukil used to tell me stories of what it was like up there. Rukil is the oldest man in the village. The kids call him Rukil Wrinkleskin, but he's a kind man. He used to tell me the greatest stories when I was a little girl. I still like to listen to his tales about the Promised Land, even though I know they're just legends, but it helps to make the Undercity seem less... less dark somehow. It's... it's just a story to make little children smile. Rukil believes in it, though. Sometimes I can almost believe it myself, but then I look around and see the ugly truth. I guess we have to make the best of what we have, though. If you really want to learn more about the Promised Land, you should speak to Rukil. He's wandering around somewhere on the south side of the village. He doesn't move too far. He's hard on his bones. He's over 100 years old. The children laugh at him, and people think he's crazy because of his stories about the Promised Land, but he's really just a kind old man. He'll be somewhere in the village. I couldn't say where for sure. He's always busy doing whatever he can to make the lives of the other villagers easier. I don't know anything about that, but maybe Gendar could help you. Sorry. Is there anything else you need? Well, I was born here for starters. My parents were outcasts banished to the Undercity for some crime or other. They never really like to talk about it. Everyone here is an outcast, or the descendants of one. It's tough down here, but we survive. I guess it's easier for me since I've never known anything different. Some of the people have given up all hope. They've become bitter and depressed, but most of us are good people, despite what our ancestors may have done. Gendar could probably tell you more, or maybe Rukil. You could talk to them if you want. There were quite a few people from the surface marching through the village, but none of them bothered to talk to me. Gendar might know more about them. Oh, okay. Well, if you ever need anything, or if you just feel like talking, come back and see me. 
I hardly ever get a chance to speak to someone from the upworld. My mommy's friend got sick. She said he got the Rak Ghoul disease. But we ain't got no medicine to make him better. The Rak Ghouls will devour us all, unless we stop. Hey, you ain't from the village. You're from the upworld, ain't you? Yes, you've got credits, I bet. Watch yourself. There's something slimy about this guy. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. My name's Saigir. I run a little salvage shop here. You want to buy something from my store? I got some good deals. If a villager comes across any useful salvage in the Undercity, they bring it to me. Every so often, members from the Lower City gangs come down to trade for the salvage. They'll exchange food and medicine for engine parts, old blasters and the like. Sometimes they even give me credits if I have some really good stuff. Oh, you better ask Gendar. He's the spokesman for the village. I just run the store. I don't want to make him mad by answering any questions. Gendar already doesn't like me. Gendar seems to think I should share the profits of my store with the whole village. He figures we're all in this together, so it should be share and share alike. But I'm the one who runs the store. I'm the one who makes the deals. The others just bring me salvage to trade with the Upworlders. Why should they get anything? He caught me hoarding supplies a while back. I figured I'd wait until food was scarce and then I could offer it to people who'd follow me instead of Gendar. Then I'd be the leader. But Gendar made me share my hoard. Ever since then, he hasn't trusted me. He keeps me around because of my store, though. Without it, this village wouldn't stand a chance. It ain't the best stuff. Mostly salvage and such, but the price is right. from the world above. Is this the time of destiny, then? Is this a portent of the salvation of my people? Or merely another false sign to mislead us from the path? Are you the herald of prophecy? The beacon to guide us through the darkness? Or are you merely another harbinger of shattered dreams and unfulfilled promises? Be careful. This one might be crazy enough to be dangerous. Speak to me, Upworlder. Tell me what fate you unleash upon us. Salvation or damnation? Speak, Upworlder, I beg you! A question. You are uncertain, bewildered, perplexed. Understandable, I suppose. Even after a hundred years of life, I myself still become confused at times. Perhaps I can make things more clear. Some things, at least. My name is Rukil, the oldest outcast here in the village. Rukul Wrinkleskin, the children call me sometimes. Once, I was honored for my wisdom. But over time, the villagers fell away from the true path. Eventually, there was only a single apprentice who followed me. And now she is gone, too. No. No, no, not yet. I must be wary, careful. You may be a false savior, 
Dare I share my secrets with you? No. Not until you prove yourself. My apprentice is... lost. I sent her out into the Undercity to find... Well, I cannot tell you. Not yet. Sadly, my apprentice has not returned. Please, Upworlder, will you help an old man? Will you seek out my apprentice in the Undercity? Her name is Malia. I must know of her fate, whatever it may be. I must know what she found. Finding her may be difficult. Malia could be anywhere in the Undercity. But if you will find her, I will know you to be our true savior. Only then can I reveal my secret knowledge to you. I wish you luck, Upworlder. Come speak to me again once you have discovered the fate of my apprentice. Wait, Upworlder. You can't go through this gate. There is too much danger and suffering beyond. For your own sake, turn back. I am Isala, healer of this village. I use my knowledge and what little resources we have to care for the outcasts who are sick or injured. But despite my medical training, there is nothing I can do to help the poor souls locked on the other side of this gate. The villagers infected with the Rabgore disease are quarantined beyond this gate. It's only a matter of time until they transform into horrible creatures that would destroy us all. So you just lock them away in a cage? For the sake of the village, we have to keep the infected ones locked away. And when they finally do transform into rock ghouls, we'll let them destroy each other. I can't stop you from going through the gates, Upworlder. But if the infected ones have already transformed into rock ghouls, you'll be walking into your grave. Greetings, Upworlder. We rarely see your kind here in the Undercity. I find it strange that so many of you have come down from the surface recently. No offense, but I can see why people normally avoid this place. Why have you come into this dark and sunless place? Is there something you need of me or my village? I will help you however I can. We are the outcasts, shunned from the surface for our crimes and banished here to the Undercity. We banded together to form this village that we might survive in this hostile environment. I am Gendar, leader of this village, as my father was and as was his father before him. Many of us have been here for generations, our ancestors cast down long ago. There is no return to the surface for us or our descendants, but somehow we managed to survive amidst the filth and roaming bands of deadly rat ghouls. Life down here can be difficult, it can break the spirit. Many in the village have become bitter and hopeless, especially those newly cast down. But life goes on, and we must try to make the best of what we have. And maybe someday we will find a better life. <laughs> Listen to me. I'm starting to sound like Rukil. The Rakuls are monsters, hideous mutations who feast on the flesh of our villagers. Their diseased jaws can infect those they attack, transforming the victim into one of those abominations. We know of no cure for the disease, and for the good of the village, we must banish any who become infected, lest they transform and turn on us. Ask your questions, Upworlder. I will answer to the best of my knowledge, though I know little beyond the borders of the Undercity. Yes, I have seen this Twi'lek many times, though I've never spoken to her. She and her Wookiee companion often pass through our village on their way to explore the sewers. There are two entrances into the sewers from the Undercity. One to the northeast of our village, the other to the southeast. But the sewers are dangerous, Upworlder. If you dare to travel those dark tunnels, you would be wise to go heavily armed, unless you wish to become a meal for the rock ghouls and the other foul creatures. Ask... Our village has seen many visitors from the surface recently. 
Armored troops, swoop gang members, mercenaries. They come to search our sunless world. They're even searching the sewers. As you wish, Upworlder. Should you have need of anything else, come speak to me. I represent the entire village and I will do my best to help you however I can. The rack ghouls are increasing in number. We cannot even venture beyond the gates for food without the- Mommy says all the Upworlders is selfish and mean. But you look nice to me. My mommy's friend got sick. She said he got the rack ghoul disease. But we ain't got no medicine to make him better. They say anyone bitten by a rack ghoul will become a rack ghoul themselves. Hey there, Upworlder. You want to see what I got for sale in my inventory? Or do you need something else? Help! It's right behind me! Help! Hurry, Hendar! Hurry! I can hear it coming! He'll never make it. He's doomed. Oof. I told him he was a fool to leave the village. He will make it. Run, Hendar, run! Open the gate! Quickly! There isn't much time! Uh, I... I can't. The Rackles are too close. The mutants will kill him if you don't open the gate! And if I open the gate, they'll kill us all! No! You can't do this! It isn't fair! Please, make him open the gate! Hindar will die if he doesn't! I can't open the gate. Not while the Rat Ghouls are so near. You'd risk your life for a stranger? <laughs> You're brave, Upworlder. I'll open the gate for you, but you gotta be quick. In a few seconds, I must close and lock it again. Hurry! While the gate is still open, you must save Hindar. I can't thank you enough for saving me, Upworlder. If I had anything but these rags on my back, it would be yours. But we have nothing. I still have you, Hendar. That's all I need. Let's go back to the village. Thank you for saving Hendar. You are braver than I, Upworlder. Maybe we outcasts have lived too long in selfish fear. Perhaps we can learn a lesson from your brave actions. <laughs> but enough of my ramblings. Is there something you need, Upworlder? I'm Trewin, from the Outcast Village. It's my job to guard the gates and see they are locked to protect us from the Rat Ghouls. <laughs> I just guard the gates. Gendar is the leader of the village, Upworlder. You should speak to him if you have any questions. I'm Trewin. Goodbye, Upworlder. You have to help me. Nobody else is gonna help me. Even the Bex won't help me. But I can't just leave him there. He, he's my friend. You'll help me, won't you? Gadden? What? I don't know what you're talking about. Please, Zalbar's in trouble. He needs our help or they're gonna sell him into slavery. Zalbar, we were just wandering around here in the Undercity. 
You know, looking for stuff we could find, just kind of exploring. We do it all the time. I guess with a Wookiee at your side, you've got to figure you can handle the odd rack ghoul attack. Only this time, they were waiting for us. Gamorrean slave hunters. We didn't even have a chance to run. Big Z threw himself at him and then roared for me to run. I, I took off. I figured Zalbar would be right behind me. But there were too many of them. He couldn't get away. They're going to sell him to a slaver, I just know it. I don't know for sure, but those Gamorians like to hang out in the sewers. The stink reminds them of home, I guess. That's probably where they took Big Z. It's a deal. As soon as we get Big Z back, I'll show you a way into that Volker base. Now come on! We have to find Zalba before they sell him to slavers, or worse! Do you know where he's being kept? The Gamorians make their camps in the sewers. I bet that's where we'll find Zalbar. And that's where I'll show you the secret entrance into the Volker compound. What? What? Yeah? Yes, what's on your mind? You got it. What? Hey there, what can I do for you? Terrace is a pretty good place to grow up, all things considered. Just stick to the area you belong in, and stay out of Davik's business, and you'll be fine. The Upper City's got some nice shops and all, but it's boring. The only time I go up there is if I need free healing from Zelka at his medical facility. What can I say? The Lower City was a great place to hang out until the Volkers started that gang war. Now you can't even walk the streets without getting shot at. It can be pretty nasty down there. You've got rat ghouls crawling around looking for their next meal. And the Gamorrean slavers like to set up their bases in the sewers. And then there's the Outcast Village, a collection of people banished to the Undercity for their crimes. I mostly avoid the village, though. It's pretty depressing to see how they live. I tend to keep my nose out of an intergalactic crime lord's business, you know? I can't tell you much that isn't common knowledge. Extortion, slavery, smuggling... davik has got a piece of all the action here on Terrace. Even the Swoop Gang's no better than to get in his way. Hey, no problem. I'm here to help, right? 
Hey there, what can- Really? You want to know about me? Nobody's ever really been interested in me before. What do you want to know? Big Z's my family, you know? My parents, well, I guess they're dead. It was just me on my own until the day I saw Zalbar in the lower city. I could tell right away he was in trouble. This was before the gang wars were out of hand. But even then, the Volkers were scum. A few of them were hassling Big Z, trying to pick a fight, but he wasn't looking for trouble. Anyway, I don't like the Volkers at the best of times. And when I saw them picking on this poor Wookiee, all alone on a strange planet, overwhelmed by the big city, I just lost it. I screamed out, leave him alone, you core slimes, and charged right at them. Well, one of them saw me coming and slapped me so hard he just about knocked me cold. Hey, don't treat me like I'm a little girl. I ain't no kid. I'm 14 years old. Those Volkers didn't scare me. They're nothing but cowards. I knew how to deal with them. Of course, I never got the chance. I guess Zalbar didn't like seeing me get smacked around. He let out this howl and yanked that Volker a meter up off the ground and held him there by his throat. The other two screamed and ran off. Can't say I blame them. The first time you see an angry Wookiee up close, it isn't a pretty sight. I thought Zalbar was gonna rip that punk's arms off and beat him to death with his own fists. The Volker was so scared, he fainted. Or maybe it was Big Z's breath just knocked him out. I keep telling Zalbar to brush those choppers of his, but he never listens. Just stay upwind when he's speaking and you'll be fine. Anyway, I knew those Volkers would be back with friends, so I grabbed Zalbar and we took off. Ever since then, we've been a team. We look out for each other, you know? He was fleeing some kind of trouble back on Kashyyyk. That's all I know, really. Big Z doesn't like to talk about it. In case you didn't notice, he's the strong, silent type. Doesn't much matter to me, though. I accept him for what he is, not what he was. Me and Zalbar like to live in the present. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? You think I can't take care of myself? I've got street smarts. I know how to get by on my own. In fact, I look out for Zalbar more than he looks out for me, you know? Big Z's a little bit too gullible to make it alone on the mean streets of the lower city. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Like I used to tell my brother, fast talk and slick words don't get the job done. My brother's a touchy subject, you know? It just so happens, I don't really feel like talking about him right now. Nothing personal. Let's just get back to the business at hand, okay? Move! I'm... I'm not afraid to use this blaster if I have to. Settle down, kid. We've already lost enough men to those damn rat ghouls. The last thing we need now is more casualties from a needless firefight. Mm. By the looks of you, I'd say you're down here for the same reason we are. To salvage something from those downed Republic space pods. Let me give you some advice. Forget about it. Do yourself a favor and just head back from where you came. That's Candorus Ordo. He's the most famous Mandalorian mercenary in this sector of the galaxy. This isn't a good place to stand around chatting. The Undercity is crawling with rat ghouls. I've already lost a half a dozen men to those monsters. Candorus, I heard something. Over there, in the shadows. Sounded like a rat ghoul. Looks like we've got company. Get those blasters ready, boys. Damn. 
I told Davik this salvage mission was a bad idea. His men aren't trained for this kind of thing, and I can't babysit them all. Okay, boys. We're getting out of here before I lose anyone else. I can't carry all this salvage back by myself. You'd be smart to get out of here as well. Even if you can handle the rat ghouls, I doubt there's anything worth finding anymore. Davik sent me down here with this motley crew to scavenge whatever we could from the Republic escape pods that crashed during the recent battle overhead. But the lower city gangs got here first. Anything worthwhile in those Republic pods is probably in their hands by now. Davik won't like that. This isn't really the best place to have these kinds of conversations, but I guess I could spare a couple of seconds for you. After all, you did help us out with those rat ghouls. The lower city is overrun with gangs, but the two most important ones are the Hidden Bex and the Black Vulkers. Used to be the Bex were the big dog and kept the others in line, but lately the Black Vulkers are moving in on Beck turf and challenging them for control. The Vulkers are even starting to defy Davik. Take these escape pods, for example. Everyone knew Davik would want first crack at them, but I know for a fact those damn Vulkers have already sent their own salvage party down here. What are you, an off-worlder? Everyone knows Davik. He's a member of the Exchange. You know, the Interstellar Crime Syndicate. Smuggling, gambling, extortion... Davik controls it all here on Taurus. That's why I'm working for him. But lately, the lower city gangs have been giving my boss some trouble. Come on, boys, let's move out! snappish when we last talked. I'm sorry about that. I get a little touchy when it comes to Griff. It's kind of embarrassing telling people about him. It's complicated. Griff wasn't the most popular guy. He had his faults. But I still loved him, you know? Sometimes people don't understand. I never knew my parents. My brother always looked out for me. He's the one who brought me here to Tars. I was just a kid, only five. But I remember the trip, if you could call it that. We were stuffed inside a packing crate in a Starfighter's cargo hold with just enough food and water to make the trip. Not exactly first class, you know? I don't know the whole story. I was pretty young, but my brother owed a lot of money. Might even have been a few arrest warrants out for him, I don't know. The only way to get off the planet was to smuggle ourselves out. I mean, I don't want to make it sound like we were criminals. Well, maybe my brother was. See, this is why I don't like to talk about it. It makes Griff sound worse than he really was. My brother had his problems, but he always looked out for me. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Without my brother, I don't know where I'd be. He gambled and drank, and he was always borrowing money for his latest get-rich-quick scheme. But he had a good heart, you know? He taught me how to survive. Showed me how to slice into a computer security system, how to get inside a locked building without the entrance codes, and how to spot a wealthy mark for a quick shell game. Yeah, Griff did right by me. I really miss him since he left. I keep hoping he'll come back someday. He promised me he would. He fell in with a bad crowd. It's all Lena's fault. She's the one who took him from me. Just batted those long lashes at him, and off he went. I don't want to talk about Griff and Lena. Just the thought of that space tramp makes my blood boil. Subject's closed, as far as I'm concerned. If I'm gonna be any help to you, I can't be worrying about my brother running off with some intergalactic skank. So is there something else you need? Okay, have it your way. Huh? Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, upworlder? Is there some Goodbye, up Greetings once more, Upworlder. Do you bring news of my apprentice? Have you discovered her fate and proved yourself to be a true savior of my people? It is as I feared, then. She joins the list of those who have given their lives in the service of our cause. But though I am saddened by this news, there is yet hope. By finding my apprentice, you have proved yourself worthy, Upworlder. You are to be the beacon on our path to salvation. You will guide us to the Promised Land. You are marked, Upworlder. Even my dim old eyes can see the mantle of destiny that cloaks you. Perhaps old Rukil knows you better than you know yourself. I am old. I have lived a hundred years in the Undercity, cast down into the darkness. 
I know the legends and history of our people, and now you must learn it too. The great city of Taurus covers the entire surface of this planet. There is no land to grow food. Kelp harvests and the creatures of the sea are our only food source. A century ago, rising levels of toxic pollution poisoned the oceans and famine swept the planet. The rich hoarded food for their own use, and the poor were left to starve and die. From what I've seen of Terrace, it doesn't look like much has changed. Except for the upper city, people here are just as bad off as the poor in your little history. But the poor rose up against this tyranny, and civil war engulfed the planet. Millions died in the fighting, and huge sections of Taurus were destroyed or abandoned. The rebellion was crushed in the end. Thousands were taken prisoner. The jails could not hold them all, and so the practice of banishing all prisoners to the Undercity was born. Many brave men and women were banished here to the Undercity for their part in the rebellion. People like my father and grandfather were cast down, along with their families. What did you expect? If they could get away with it, the Teresian nobles would stuff their own mothers down here to make more room in the Upper City. Now we live a dark existence beneath the streets of Terrace. A life devoid of all hope but one. The Promised Land. And you will be the one to show us the way to get there. Legends tell of a self-sufficient colony founded just before the famine and lost during the Civil War. A paradise beneath the Undercity where droid servants tend to every need. For many years, I searched for the Promised Land, just as my grandfather and father did before me. When I became old and gray, my apprentice continued the search on my behalf. Sounds like a myth to me. Something to give the people here some false hope to cling to so they don't go mad with despair. I have collected many clues hinting at its location. The journal of my apprentice provides yet more information, but still... There are too many pieces missing from this puzzle. But I know my father and grandfather each had journals where they recorded their own discoveries. Perhaps with their journals, I could at last uncover its hidden location. Yes, Upworlder. Well done. However, I see that this journal alone does not have enough clues for me to solve this mystery. Too many pieces are still missing. I'm afraid that only with all three journals, my grandfather's, my father's, and my apprentice's, will I be able to discover the location of the Promised Land. I will leave this journal with you for safekeeping for now. Perhaps it will aid you in your search for the others. I wish you luck, Upworlder, for the sake of the entire village. Again, is there something else you need? I am Isala, healer of this village. I use my knowledge and what little resources we have to care for the outcasts who are sick or injured. But despite my medical training, there is nothing I can do to help the poor souls locked on the other side of this gate. The villagers infected with the Rukgu disease are quarantined beyond this gate. It's only a matter of time until they transform into horrible creatures that would destroy us all. So you just lock them away in a cage? For the sake of the village, we have to keep the infected ones locked away. And when they finally do transform into rock ghouls, we'll let them destroy each other. Nothing can be done for the infected villagers. Even the serum to counteract the rat disease wouldn't be any use now. 
Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into rat ghouls and attack them at any moment. If you have questions, you should speak to Gendar. He's the leader of this village. All my attention has to stay focused on trying to ease the suffering of those within the village. But despite my medical training, there is nothing I can do to help the poor souls locked on the other side of this gate. The villagers infected with the rub- So you just lock them away in a- For the sake- Nothing- Nobody- I can't help the infected ones. They have to die so that the rest of the village can live. I accept this. If you think that makes me a coward, so be it. Farewell. I saw you talking with Rukul. He told you his legends about the Promised Land, didn't he? He told you all about his missing apprentice and the other lost explorers, right? You know, most people don't believe his stories. They figure he's nothing but an old cook. But I think there might be some truth in what he's saying. That's why I want to stop him. For an outcast, I've got things pretty good. The village relies on me to bring in food and supplies. I'm an important man. If it wasn't for Gendar, I'd be running this place. I get the feeling if it wasn't for Gendar, this place would be a lot worse off than it is. But if Rukul ever finds his promised land, I'm sunk. People won't need to rely on me anymore. I'll just be another nobody like all the rest of the villagers. I won't let that happen. The two explorers who went searching for the Promised Land might have found something. They might have found clues or evidence, just like Rukul's apprentice. They would have recorded that information in their journals. I'll pay you if you bring all three journals to me. The two from the explorers and the one from Rukul's apprentice. Then I can destroy the evidence and make sure nobody ever finds the Promised Land. I've saved up enough credits for my business here to make it worth your while if you help me. Once you have all three journals, just bring them to me and I'll give you a decent reward. Now, was there something else you needed? You better ask Gendar. He's the spokesman for the village. I just run the store. I don't want to make him mad by answering any questions. Gendar already doesn't like me. Yeah, okay, you come back and see me if you want a deal. Rock ghouls. 
Ghouls got them. We've had so many encounters with those things, we've actually run out of Rack Ghoul serum. Plus, we've had several skirmishes with looters from those lower city swoop gangs. I'm telling you, we should just stay in the upper city where we're in control. Was that why you're down here? Search and rescue. I didn't think they'd send anyone. They were in the southern section of the Undercity when we lost contact. I would have gone to investigate, but my orders are to search for those crashed escape pods, even if it means leaving another patrol to die. Hey, I'd never disobey my orders. I'm not a fan of court martials and executions. I was just talking, you know. Nothing anyone has to mention to the commander. Come on, patrol, let's get back to it. The sooner we get this search done, the sooner we can get out of this mutant-infested hole. Move out! Yeah?
Brezik, head of the Black Volker Gang. He told us to kill anyone who came snooping around. There was one survivor, a female Republic officer. Bastilla or something like that. Brezik took her back to the Black Volker base as his prisoner. You can't. Nobody can. They'll shoot you on sight. Even I couldn't get you in. They just shoot us both if we show up there together. Well, you could talk to the hidden Vex. They're our biggest rival. They might know some way to get in. Look, that's all I know, I swear. Please, just let me go, and I promise you'll never see me again. What? But I surrendered! Damn you! Time to rumble! What? Back again? Is there something else you need?
back again? Your offer is generous, Upworlder, but the serum is useless to us now. The villagers infected with the Ratgul disease have been quarantined beyond this gate. At any moment they could be transformed into terrible monsters. Nobody would be foolish enough to risk going into the pens to give them the cure. The infected ones could transform into rat ghouls and attack them at any moment. Farewell. Back again? Is this... You're off the village. Nobody. I can't stop you from going through the gates, Upworlder. But if the infected ones have already transformed into rock ghouls, you'll be walking into your grave. Please, you have to help us. We beg you. We don't want to end up like the others. Please help us. We can't end up like them. You... you have a cure. Please, give it to me. Quickly, before it's too late. Quickly, I must inject it before it's too late. Yes. I feel it working. I feel the disease burning away. It's like a miracle. I am cured. Thank you, Upworlder. You have saved us from a fate worse than death. I only wish I had some reward to give you. Maybe you can find something worthwhile in the wreckage of that Republic escape pod. Not long ago, an escape pod crashed in the Undercity, far to the northeast of the village. We were going to try and salvage equipment from it, when we were attacked by the rat ghouls and infected. I'd tell you more if I could, but our salvage team never reached the pod. It's probably still there, unless some of the other Upworlders already found it and picked it clean. We should go now, Upworlder. We're anxious to return to the village and see our families again. Thank you once again for everything you have done. You amaze me. I always thought the surface dwellers couldn't care less about us outcasts. But you risked everything to help those infected villagers. I wish I had some type of reward to give you, but we outcasts have nothing. All I can offer is the gratitude of the entire village. Greetings once more, Upworlder. Do you bring news of my apprentice? Have you discovered her fate and proved yourself to be a true savior of my people? It is as I feared, then. She joins the list of those who have given their lives in the service of our cult. My fight? You are 
are marked, Upworlder. Even my dim old eyes can see the mantle of destiny that cloaks you. I... I offer... Hey. You have done a great thing for my village, Upworlder. Few from the surface would bother to cure an outcast of the Rakul disease as you have done. My only regret is that I have no reward to give you for your aid. Save my thanks and the thanks of my people. Ask your... As you wish, Upworlder. Should you have need of anything else, come speak to me. I represent the entire village and I will do my best to help you however I can. Hey there, Upworlder! You want to see what I got for sale in my inventory? Or do you need something else? It ain't the best stuff. Mostly salve. There, Upworlder. Yeah. Thank you once again for saving me from the Rack Ghouls, Upworlder. I owe you everything. As do I, Upworlder. I don't know what I would have done if anything had happened to Hindar. Thank you. For an outcast, I've got things pretty good. The village relies on me to bring in food and supplies. I'm an important man. If it wasn't for Gendar, I'd be running this place. I get the feeling if it wasn't for Gendar, this place would be a lot worse off than it is. But if Rukul ever finds his promised land, I'm sunk. People won't need to rely on me anymore. I'll just be another nobody like all the rest of the villagers. I won't let that happen.
The two explorers who went searching for the promised land might have found something. They might have found clues or evidence, just like Rukul's apprentice. They would have recorded that information in their journals. I'll pay you if you bring all three journals to me. The two from the explorers and the one from Rukul's apprentice. Then I can destroy the evidence and make sure nobody ever finds the promised land. I've saved up enough credits for my business here to make it worth your while if you help me. Once you have all three journals, just bring them to me and I'll give you a decent reward. Now, was there something else you needed? Yeah, okay. You'll come back and see me if you want a deal. Yes, upworlder? Is there something you need? Goodbye, up... Like some kind of hideous disease. Thank you. Those things, they attacked as soon as we came out the doors. They... they killed the others. It, it was horrible. Bastila? She wasn't in this pod. We were tracking her pod just before we hit the planet's surface. It went down somewhere to the west. We lost the signal when our own pod crashed. Maybe... Wait. What was that? Did you hear that? I thought I heard something. Over there! I heard something, I know I did. There it is again. It's those monsters. They're coming back! Run for your lives! For the Republic, right? You've been all over the galaxy, I bet, right? So tell me, how would you rate Taurus compared to other worlds you've seen? To be honest, Mission, Taurus would rate pretty low. The prejudice, the rich spoiling themselves while the poor are crushed beneath them, it, it's not a pretty picture. Yeah, but that's only since the Sith occupation. Before that, well, 
I guess it wasn't all that different, really. Hmm. Maybe Taurus ain't as great as I thought, you know? Trust me, Mission. There are a lot of worlds better than Terrace. There, there are worse, too, but Terrace is no place for a kid to live on her own. Even a kid who's got a Wookiee to look out for. Hey, I ain't no kid. I look out for Zalbar as much as he looks out for me. Big C's my friend, not my babysitter. Geez, I come ask you a question, you give me a lecture. Don't you snap at me, Missy. You want a lecture? How's this? Only bratty little children fly off the handle because of a simple comment. I don't have to listen to you, Karth. You ain't my father, though you're sure old enough to be. So keep your lectures inside your withered old head, because I don't need them. And I sure as hell don't need this. Look, let's just drop it and get back to what we were doing.
We've already run out of Rackgall Serum. Plus, I heard we lost one of our patrols in the Undercity. From what I heard, they were in the southern section of the Undercity when contact with the base was cut off. They haven't been heard from since. It's probably another rack ghoul attack. And nobody's even out looking for them. Finding those downed escape pods takes priority over everything else, even the lives of a patrol. Order like that isn't good for morale. That energy shield leads to another section of the sewers. The entrance to the Vulcar base is somewhere past there. I've got the codes to lower the shield, but we have to rescue Zalbar from those Gamorrean slavers. Don't worry, we can come back after we find Big Z.
manual locks. No computer codes or nothing. The sewers is the only place you'd see one of these on Terrace. You can't use conventional security spikes on these old locks. But don't worry. I've come across them before. I've rigged up a little device that should do the trick. <coughs> I'm glad to see you too, Big Z. You didn't think I'd forget about you. Mission and Zalbar, together forever. <coughs> These are my
my new friends, Big Z. Without them, I could never have gotten you out. solemn vow a Wookiee can make. It means he'll stay by your side for the rest of your life. Wherever you go, whatever you do, Zalbar will be with you. <coughs> I guess this means you're stuck with me, too. Wherever Big Z goes, I'm going. I almost lost him once. It's not gonna happen again. So, I guess I still owe you one secret path into the Volker base. That was the deal, wasn't it? Don't worry. I know a backdoor into that scum den. I better come with you. The Volkers put up a force shield to keep the sewer dwellers out. I'm one of the only non-Volkers on Terrace who can get you past it. I can't remember exactly how to get there, but I know it was somewhere here in the sewers. Over to the northeast, if I remember right. I just hope the Rancor Monster isn't still there. There used to be a Rancor Monster that made its nest in that part of the sewers. Pretty much eats anything it can get its claws on. That thing is huge! Luckily, Rancors aren't too bright. I was able to sneak past it before, so I'm sure we'll figure something out. That is, unless you want to change your mind. Okay then, off we go. Like I said, somewhere to the southeast. Just look for the force shield, and we'll know we're there.
You amaze me. I always thought the surface dwellers couldn't care. I wish. Hello again. I'm glad you came back. It's kind of neat to speak to someone from the surface world. Is there anything I can do for you? You'd probably get more information from Gendar, the village leader, or maybe Rukil, but I'll tell you whatever I can. Well, everyone, some of the people have given up all hope. If you get... Oh! There, upworld.
You amaze me. I wish... You won't be able to get that computer to lower the energy fields unless you know the proper codes. Lucky for you, I've got them. I picked them off the pocket of a black bulker who had a little too much to drink in the cantina one night. Here, let me get that energy field down for you.
Wookiees aren't into the whole clothing thing, but you could start a whole new trend. You'd be on the cutting edge. Okay, okay, sheesh. Try to offer some constructive criticism and this is the thanks I get? Let's move on. You can just stay naked and scruffy for all I care. Thank <laughs> you. 